Howdy hammock campers! I've just spent some time testing out Dee Dee's new hammock under quilt. This is a brand new product that they've just made. They've sent me a copy. A copy? They've sent me an actual under quilt to test out uh, so I can do a review and, and let you guys know what I think. Now, as you might know if you've seen any of my other videos, I'm a big fan of just recycling old sleeping bags and pinning them up as an under quilt. Under quilts are notoriously expensive normally, so why spend the money when you can just repurpose an old sleeping bag? So I was really interested to see if this is any better than a sleeping bag. Could I recommend that you purchase this over and above just recycling an old sleeping bag? Well, of course it's better. It's designed specifically to be used as an underquilt. It's not, it's not being bodged on. It, it has these drawstrings so you can get a nice snug attachment on the fly. Uh, it has shock cords with carabiners at each end so you can clip it around the suspension. It sets up in seconds. You don't need a faff on cutting up a sleeping bag and stitching it together or duct taping it together in my case. So yeah, it's easier to use. It's more functional. It is a superior product. That should go without saying, really. Does it keep you any warmer? Well, not really, no, because it does the same job, yeah? Once you've, got, once you've got it attached, so in my case, once I've spent ages figuring out the best way to attach the sleeping bag so that it gets a nice snug fit every time, then it, it traps that layer of air and it does keep you warm. With this one, you're going to have to reattach it every time because there's no way really to permanently affix it, but that's good because it means if you're traveling somewhere hot, you can get rid of it a lot easier. You can just pack it up. Or if you just, I don't know, you, if you don't need it, you can just leave it at home, unlike with mine. Yeah, it's all inside the snake skin. It's all attached to the, to the hammock already. So yeah, this allows you to adjust it on the fly so you can get a nice snug fit easily every time. And it's easy to remove as well. So yeah, I mean, in this one, it isn't even that expensive. You know, some some underquilts are just astronomically priced. I like DD because they always they always give a good choice of product and they always give a good price. Yeah, so this is nice. I can't actually remember how much it was, but when I checked, I was surprised at how little it was for an underquilt. I'm gonna remove this mosquito net and uh, do a little bit of a demonstration on how to fit it. So bear with me. Okay, so you've got this elasticated cord that runs all the way around the perimeter of the quilt. And each, and there's a, on each side and each end, let me find it, there you go, there's a toggle which you can use to tighten and, and loosen that. And then, on each end you also have two lengths of shock cord with a mini carabiner on. And these simply clip over the edge of the suspension, like so. You also have one on each side, they'll clip into this loop here and one that'll clip into the other loop up there. And that's it basically, you clip, you clip your four, two on each end and then you tighten it with the drawstrings. These ones on the side are sort of extras, you don't really need them, maybe you find that you do, I certainly didn't, they're there just in case. And in any case, this cord is going to be too long once you've clipped your ends up it's going to be unless you've got a really wide hammock or something I don't know but what I was doing was just looping it around so put it through this loop and loop, loop it through there and again and then clip it to shorten that cord down basically let me quickly string it up so you can see how quick it is so I've already done that one end took two seconds this ends the same you have carabiners on each end and you have a toggle here with which to tighten the drawstrings. Okay, that's it on. That's it on there. And I'm going to tighten it up here. I'm just going to make sure it goes all around. And then tighten it up. Tighten it up here, do the same on the other side, there it is, let's put it tight, and last but not least this end here, and that's it, done. 
like I say, you don't even need these ones on the side, really. This one's still hanging there, but if I wanted some more stability, I could just loop it through like so. And again. And then the same with the other two on the other side. But like I say, it's not really needed that. And there you go, you can, you can already see that it sort of matches the shape of the hammock and it sits nice and snug. Done. And it really is warm. It does, you can tell the difference. You know that it's doing its job, it is working. It is good. I had an issue keeping my feet warm or my head warm. This may be because I'm new to the whole under quilt diagonal lay thing, but I mean, right now, this matches the shape of the hammock nicely. But when you get in and you go for that diagonal lay, you distort the shape of the hammock quite a lot. And the underquilt isn't under the same tension as the hammock, so it sort of remains that, in that sort of nice U cocoon shape. And that leaves me with either my feet or my head sort of in the hammock but over the edge of the underquilt. Let, let me get in and see if I can demonstrate because it, it's a bit abstract, isn't it? So one second. Okay, so you can probably see now that getting in the hammock and laying on a diagonal distorts the shape of the hammock. It's no longer in a nice U-shape. You have this very high ridge here and it's low here. And the way that it works at the moment, my feet are still covered by the undercoat. You can see it there. And they're still going to be kept nice and warm, but my head isn't. Yeah, this underquilt has, has got lost right down here. Now, it's good that you can make adjustments on the fly using these toggles, even whilst in the hammock. So, I could play with that for a bit maybe and see if I can get it. But I already feel as I'm pulling it up here, I'm going to lose it on my feet. And I'd rather keep my feet warm. I have, I have methods of keeping my head warm. I, I sleep with a trapper hat on or a balaclava and whatnot. And there's a hood on my sleeping bag. So, my advice would to be to bias it towards your feet if you, if you find yourself in this situation and worry about keeping your head warm. Unless you pack a bunch of extra warm socks with you. In that case, do what you like. And I imagine this isn't a problem with the underquilt. I imagine it's a problem with underquilts in general. You know, the underquilts are fairly uniform in shape, but the minute you lie diagonal in the hammock, it isn't. So that's, that's going to be a little bit difficult. But other than that, it's really sound. I mean, I gave, it, I gave it a really proper test. Normally when I sleep, I use my three season sleeping bag, my Exped Sinmax 7 underneath me to keep me warm, a sleeping bag acting as an underquilt for an extra layer of warmth. And I have, you know, my PJs on and, and a hat on and whatnot. These last couple of nights I thought, I'll, I wanna, we're heading towards summer, it's not as cold as it has been, and obviously you need an underquilt when it's cold, so I wanna give it as harsh a test as possible. So I just use my summer sleeping bag, with a sleeping bag liner, and a light pair of PJs, and, and no hat in this case, I just use the hood from the sleeping bag, and this underquilt. So I was deliberately putting myself in a colder environment than normal, and all I noticed really, the only discomfort was uh, the, the feet getting cold because they weren't covered by the quilt and as soon as I switched I started out with my head at this end as soon as I switched to my head at this end and my feet are at this end and getting kept warm I could sleep quite comfortably and I, I slept very well I did then go back over to the jungle hammock which is behind the camera right now and sleep in that for a bit so I could do a proper comparison I, it was strange I think because the expert cinema keeps you so warm underneath I was noticing more cold across the top of me, whereas in, in this hammock I wasn't noticing any cold except on my feet. Um, so I think it was just a, a relational thing, basically. Relatively speaking, my back is warmer under that Exped 7, and so I could feel the cold on my top, whereas here my system finds its own sense of homeostasis and I slept very well. All in all, I like it and I'm going to continue to use it. Uh, so yeah. Check it out. Over and out, hammock campers.